asleep. Two seconds.
People have never seen something like what we do. And there is nothing like what we do, really, exactly the same. The crazy bikes coming in, and the band comes off and starts playing hot jazz, and then someone standing on someone else's shoulders and juggling knives. People have never seen something like this. Some people are scared. Some people are like, oh, what's this? Oh, I can't look. And, um, some people are very excited, some people can't see us. The street show is the most common and the most easy and my favorite because we're taking everyday street life where people are walking around shopping, looking for something, I don't know, just walking and we make a circus in the, on the corner. Whoa, we actually change the, change the environment around us. It's, it's my favorite. Every show is going to be different because every place is different and, and what we can use. I like to walk on a rope and so I have to always find a place to put it if it's 
between two trees or two ancient columns or between two bikes or on people's shoulders or something. Every time it's different. It was evolution of a thing, you know. Everybody learns a trick and comes together and it starts to build up and build up, you know. Maybe it's something like uh, a cabaret or vaudeville, where there's an announcer that says, Ladies and gentlemen, our next act is ta -da! and then that act is finished, and then the next act comes up, and the next act. And they may not have anything to really do with each other. They don't tie together so much. They're just people doing funny things. And of course you need music to have a show. So we've always just played music behind the people doing the acts. Sometimes we're four people, sometimes we're 14 people. Sometimes there's even been 24 people in the group. If you're willing to, you know, travel and come with us, then you can come along for a while. And it's always been what one person referred to as a moving circus school. where we kind of just pick up and drop off members and people uh, get into different acts and get into different circus activities, whatever they like, along the way. So maybe someone will just come along with a good attitude and willing to wash dishes after we eat, and pretty soon they're the star of the show at the end of the summer. And maybe they didn't have so many great circus acts in the beginning, but it's not really a requirement to have a great act, although it is nice, but it's more like an attitude. throw yourself into the project. No one has any distinct, like, really idea of what we should do at the next show. There's a lot of impromptu uh, performing and a lot of improvisation. We just begin and, okay, I'm doing this, okay, you, next. Yeah, I was always impressed by by tricks, by circus tricks. But like most people, it's you're far, so far away from it, you can't. Like, oh, I could never do that. I could never juggle when I was a kid. You know, not until I was twenty, almost twenty-one, I learned to juggle something. other people that were doing one friend Pierre Crusher who sticks a knife up his nose mm. and uh, he taught me a lot about circus and how to just if you believe that you're doing it then you're doing it you don't have to wait for someone else to tell you what to do you just make the world what you want it to be sometimes we do festivals and political events and schools and orphanages, weddings.
sometimes we do shows for like punk rock kids and then we do more stupid things and dangerous things. Kids, it'll be more little magic tricks and funny things like that. And the street show is for everyone, so it's a mix of everything. Some things for the kids, some things for the adults. can't do the same show in the same town too many times. If you travel, then every time you have a, a new audience. People that have never seen something like you before. After a few months, it's time to go. But we don't have any set time of any place we stay. We travel by bicycle, so it's, we go very slow. I come from Alaska, and it's very far away from everything, and a little bit boring. I left on a motorcycle when I was 20, searching for something. Now eight years, I just kept going. We started off in the United States, and that's where I met him. And then he told me he was coming to Europe. He started bicycling around and he started doing the bicycle circus, so I came over to Denmark for that. So I've been around Europe now, some places twice, some places once, and it's always different. And now we came back to Greece. I guess the Cyclone Circus is third winter in Europe. And just by traveling through all these places at the speed we go, and we stop for a week or something and talk with people. We camp and cook over the fire and use a tent. Mm -hmm. And when we get to big cities, we usually look for a squat or we already have some contacts from friends in neighboring cities. You learn a lot about about things you don't know when you travel. If you stay in the same place all your life, you only have the influences from what you hear in television. But if you travel, you have real life. 
experiences. I noticed a lot of people in my hometown in Alaska have get married and have kids in this at very young age and they don't know anything about the world, only what television and school has taught them and their parents. And I think it's better to go and experience the world first before you pass on your not knowledge to your children. That's why I like traveling is just to see the world from someone else's point of view. Like how can I know what my city is like if I don't see it from a different place. There's always people asking me things about being inspired by different shows or like when they see Fred doing some of his really funny, fantastic things. Sure, they're real amazed. Or mostly they're amazed at the way Channing smells so bad. <coughs> <laughs> They're really amazed at that. Mm, uh, I was riding my bicycle one day and uh, a strange event happened. I got hit by a car. A car. <laughs> and when I came to, I was surrounded by, by clowns. And it was very, uh, I would not say frightening experience but a little bit peculiar. And from that moment on, I am as I am. As I am, as I am, as I am. It's a little bit peculiar here because uh, there's a lot of sun, but it doesn't seem to affect the people so mm. much. Mm, I, I've been wondering this for a long time. It's a sunny country, everything is happy, they have baklava, they have so much good food and so much sun that they have absolutely no reason to be sitting. I started traveling when I was 18, which was five years ago, but like in the summer, you know, mm -hmm. maybe for, for like a month, and now it, about approximately nine months of the year I travel. I think I'll go back to my home, uh, I'll take a boat to Japan, and then a boat to Hawaii, and then a boat to South America, and then I'll go north. Maybe. I don't know. We have pretty good reception. Mm -hmm. Most people, most people tend to like the show we make. Everybody, including the the bar owner across the street from Praxis, he loves oh, us. Shanning's crazy.
for four years by Pazina Tal. someone says, oh, a circus, and they come to see us, maybe they don't expect, like, what we are. Maybe they expect elephants and lions and tigers and bears and flying trapeze. But mostly, you can call anything a circus. So when they see well, something, like, with some amateurish energy, they really appreciate it. Yeah, I love the big circus. And it's very inspiring for us. They're just kind of a, a fantastic thing that bring people to another place. And I think in a small way, what we do also evokes an imagination in people. Um, it's just old time jazz music. A lot of it's from the south or from New Orleans. It started around the 1900s and most of the songs we play are 100 years old. They're mostly funny songs from a time when I think music was more pure and not so much written for money and recording contracts. It's when the music came out of neighborhoods and for parades and funerals and, you know, Carnival or Mardi Gras. There weren't so many record contracts and record producers. And you can tell in the music, it's for fun. It's for entertainment of people. It's not for, like, selling to the masses for money. to carry a tent, or if we can uh, ever get on the sea with a boat, we can pull around a, a circus tent and set it up. That's what I would like to do, to, to go to a town and, and advertise the show, make a parade. 
before the television and, and all this, it was the form of entertainment. Everyone wants to watch a show, something distract you from the rest of everyday life. And so there were many traveling groups, I think, hundreds of years ago. And then now everyone sits in their house and watches the TV like this. And it's hard to break people from that habit when they see a show in the street and you're like, all right, I know, we get it. Get excited, clap your hands or something. And they don't understand that they're part, that they're really there. It's not the norm anymore. They're so used to being separated from their entertainment. <laughs> change the world. Everyone says no war, no war, but they don't do anything different with their lives to change it. So I think riding your bike and not supporting the corporations and the companies that you don't want to support is a big part of changing the world. And a lot of people maybe are starting to think this way. Don't support things that you don't believe in. <laughs> I think every city would be better if all the cars were pressed into cubes and made into bicycles. You don't need cars in the city. In any city, you can get around with bikes or maybe at public transportation. Most people are just one person in the car and they take up all this space to park. And in Hanya, you have all the old port now is full of cars, so there's no place for us to make a show these days. You have a high bike with a lot of things on it and it's windy and rainy. And that, oh, oh, get out of the way, I'm important. Because I'm in a car once when in Bulgaria, a van just knocked me off, just hit me in, in the middle of the road and kept going. And one time in France, a woman opened her door in front of me and I hit her door and, and bent it. <laughs> and my bike was okay, I was okay, but she couldn't close the door anymore. <laughs> so sometimes the bikes are stronger than the cars even. Yeah, 
it's exciting. You meet other people, you learn about other cultures. And yeah, you stay warm in the winter. Because as a street musician, you need to play all the way through the year to get money uh, to survive. Anyhow, so you got to go to the south in the winter because it's too cold in the north. This is where we work on bikes. It's a building donated by some guy, Yanis. He just has his building, he doesn't use it. So he's never used it. All these bikes are from the garbage and now we're making them run slowly. <laughs> Lots of people get annoyed by our lifestyle. And if they see us doing a show and they're with their kids, they think it's great. But when we're living our life, they don't tolerate it. We're eight bikes going slowly in a street. Car drivers don't like that. Because they want to go place in a hurry. Police don't like our show. In Siena, in Italy, we were playing for five minutes before three or four policemen came and told us to go. And the crowd loved our show, they were like, let them continue. This little old lady was like, they're not doing any harm, why can't they play? And the policeman told her to go home. We stopped the show, of course. We uh, sit around in the street because we don't have a place to live. People who uh, don't like vagabonds don't approve of it. They think we're a waste of space, they think we're uh, too noisy, uh, we're, we shouldn't be in their town. But then again, there are lots of people who think we're great. People who say, come and stay, come and do a show outside my shop. We want people to have open minds. Uh, you can have beliefs, but as soon as you tie them down or refuse to change them, they're just rules. Μια ευχάριστη νότα εδώ στην πλατεία τη αγορά που συνήθω του βλέπουμε. Είναι άνθρωποι οι οποίοι είναι ευχάριστοι, χαρίζουν το γέλιο και η απορία μα τώρα πώ θα καταφέρουν αυτό είναι ένα δικό του βέβαια. Εντάξει, καλό είναι να συνεχίσουν. Δεν ξέρω αν είναι κάτι οργανωμένο ή κάτι μεμονωμένο. Εκείνο που ξέρω εγώ είναι πάρα πολύ ωραίο. Σε ένα πολύ ψηλό ποδήλατο να πούμε. Ναι, τον έχω αντιληφθεί εδώ πέρα, να δεν περιφέρεται εδώ πέρα. Ε, άλλο τίποτα δεν έχω αντιληφθεί, κατάλαβε. Είδα ορισμένε μαμά που περνούσαν τυχαίω με τα παιδιά. Είχαν σταματήσει και το περιεργαζό του, αν κατάλαβε. Τα κοιτούσαν δηλαδή. Ένα βράδυ περνούσα από εδώ για να πω στο θέατρο στο Δίον με την κόρη μου. Λοιπόν, ακριβώ στην Τράπεζα τη Ελλάδο μπροστά ήταν τα δύο παιδιά και κάνανε μία παράσταση, α την πω έτσι. Εδώ στην πλατεία. Ο ένα ήταν στο ποδήλατο και όλο έκανε διάφορε κινήσει ξαπλωμένο στον δρόμο. Πολύ ωραίε ήταν οι ασκήσει που έκανε. Δεν το έχετε δει ποτέ, Όχι. Έχετε δει ποτέ το τσίρκο με τα ποδήλατα. Σήμερα όχι. Όχι. Ναι. Πού τους έχεις δει. Στον ποδηλατικό γύρο της πόλης. Εγώ δεν τους έχω, δεν έχω δει. Όχι. Και τι έχετε να πείτε γι' αυτό. Τα καλύτερα. Δηλαδή. Τα καλύτερα. Έχω δει κάτι ψηλά ποδήλατα, δεν ξέρω τι παλικάρια είναι αυτά. Κυκλοφορούμε στα Χανιά. Περίεργη. Περίεργη, εντάξει. Μπορεί μαλλιά, ρούχα λαλούμα λαλούμ. Κάτι τέτοια πράγμα, δεν ξέρω. Ε, ναι. Ήταν κοπέλε. Κάτι νεαροί και τρέχανε από εδώ, τρέχανε από εκεί, επιδούσανε τα ποδήλατα πάνω, έτσι όρθια. Ήταν ωραία. Τους θεωρούσατε σαν εξωγήινους λίγο? Ναι, παράξενοι. Ας πούμε, λέγαμε αυτοί οι άνθρωποι είναι ειδικευμένοι σε αυτά τα πράγματα, αλλά δεν είναι, ας πούμε, είναι κάτι το ιδιότερο. Ούτε ήταν αυτός απόκριες. Όχι. Είναι καμιά εικοσαριά μέρα. Δεν άκουε στα τούμπανα τα αυτά. Στην εδώ, στο Αλούξ. Δεν το άκουσα. Και κόσμο είχαν μαζευτεί, παιδιά. Μια χαρά. Δηλαδή. Ε, δηλαδή το στυλάκι του, εντάξει, αυτά. 
Ναι, καθώς πήγαινα στη δουλειά, ε, είδα μια μεγάλη παρέα με κάτι φτιαγμένα, κάτι τρελά ποδήλατα, ας πούμε, και να, ξανεβαίνανε πάνω συγκεκριμένα την πλατεία Κολογοτρώνη. Πηγαίνανε προς την ε, Περίδο. Είναι πολύ εντυπωσιακή, μου αρέσουν πάρα πολύ και τους βλέπω έτσι και κατά διαστήματα στην πόλη και είναι ένα συνήθιστο για μας, μια συνήθιστη εικόνα. Και τώρα γιατί τραβάτε εσείς. Εμείς τραβάμε κάτι τελείως διαφορετικό, ένα ροπορτάζ για εξωπεστία το... της μετρο... μετρολογίας. <laughs> <laughs> έτσι τους βγαίνει, έτσι το κάνουν, άλλοι κάνουν άλλες τρέλες. Δεν το θεωρώ ιδιαίτερη τρέλα βέβαια, αλλά... Είναι κάπως. Κάθε άνθρωπο έχει και το δικό του τρόπο. Άλλο να τραγουδεί, άλλο να χορεύει, άλλο να κάνει νούμερα. Αν το κάνουν για να επιβιώσουν, μια χαρά τα πάντα. Μ' άρεσε και εμένα. Εγώ είμαι 70 χρονών και μ' άρεσε που κάνανε αυτά τα νούμερα. Ήταν με το ποδήλατο, απάνω στο ποδήλατο, άλλο πολύ ψηλό το ποδήλατο. Ωραία ήταν. Φοβηθήκατε. Ω, oh, εγώ δεν φοβούμαι γιατί έχω περάσει πολλά τέτοια. <laughs> Έχετε κι εσεί ανέβει σε δύο ποδήλατο. Ποτέ μου δεν είχα ανέβει. Μικροί, εφέρνανε οι αδερφέ μου, καθίζαν στα ποδήλατα, αλλά εγώ ήμουν πολύ τυπικιά και δεν ήθελα. Δεν μου άρεσε.
Yo, I'm a bass. You know what happens to me in my life? hundred years ago I was born, and it was nice and easy street. They used me with a bow. I had a bow tie. And then in my twenties and thirties it was my wild years. It was all drugs and jazz. And then some Scottish guy who thought he was a rockabilly superstar started slapping me around. I got scars all over my neck from it. And now this guy thinks he's a jazz musician, but he ain't. He calls himself Dr. Jazz or Fidgety Feed or something like that, but really he's a space case. I know, I've seen him. And his pal, that awful vegan guy, who keeps on throwing blowing broccoli down my mouth. Oh, he's, a, he's terrible. I can't stand the sight of him. Yeah, you think you got a bad? This guy, he beats me and he beats me and he slaps the side of me and... Makes me fall it all apart, and then he ties all sorts of strings and oh, you pull to some weird, crazy S and M shit. Yeah, but I'm a squeeze box, you see, and all I do is get tugged around and pulled around, and they push my buttons all day long with all this hot jazz, you see. All I do is get squeezed and pulled, see. I want something better out of life. You yeah, see? you're yeah, right. You see, I'm sick of being slapped around. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, see, we just get beat up and slapped around and blown down our mouths. Amen, and, brother. Yeah, we want something better out of yeah. life, man. We're sick of this kind of traveling on bicycles and jumping all over the place. Why, just yesterday, old Channing, he did a suicide and I went flying all over the place. Oh, how hard, yeah, how hard. I'm tired of this, I tell you. Since I was a child, I was like, uh, I, I always uh, loved street musicians, you know? Uh, well, I didn't really love them, I wasn't like having pictures on my walls, but uh, I, uh, I, my family always uh, took me to see street musicians. I have friends of my family, uh, puppeteers, and uh, musicians, people who perform on the street. So I was kind of brought up in, in, in the system. My mom was always like, well, you, you can play your clarinet on the street and people down there, they make this much money. When I was like 12, and I was like, oh yeah, well, that's a lot of money. I'd like to have it. I don't care how I get it. So your mother is uh, satisfied that uh, you are making all of these journeys and travel, huh? She probably regretted the day that she said that, if she remembered it. Yeah, well, she's, uh, 
Mm. My parents don't really. Uh, they they were very worried at the beginning when I started living this life, but after a while they just got used to it. And my friends back at school have got work, have got jobs. Even if they're making good money, they're not totally happy. You know, I feel much better doing this. There's so much pressure for people to just live the lifestyle that they're told, you know? You don't hear about people stepping outside this and succeeding. There are very few, and if they succeed and they step outside this, people don't talk about that. You just hear about the organize, the road, follow the road, walk straight ahead, follow the next guy's ass. And we're trying to get out and say, right, what's successful in life, you know? It's not about having a car, it's not about like, impressing the girls or trying to impress men and getting nice clothes. It's about having fun, it's about being creative, it's about expressing yourself, it's about seeing the world and enjoying yourself, it's about meeting people, it's about learning stuff and uh, we're trying to tell people this. <laughs> Like Zorba says, you have to be a bit crazy to have the courage to be free.
only in the time of Lent. <laughs> and this is Channing. And we'll be song on the way here. Meets the ivory. So take away. When you're ready, Channing, come on. Shoulder going. 